Ooh, what's up and welcome into the program guys post game pod today is sunday september 25th and the oklahoma sooners are three and one they lost last night to the kansas state wildcats 41 34 in norman like we do every week i watched the game from my phone streaming while i was working mark and ryan were at the game in norman um Matt watched at home. Patrick watched at home on TV, correct? Yeah, Mm -hmm. that is right. Yep. All right. So, boys, 41-34, opening thoughts before we break down offense and defense. Just just opening thoughts. I know it's an emotional day. (laughs) Let's let's air the grievances uh, without getting too deep into it. Uh, I'll I'll go ahead and start. Kansas State's our daddies. They really are. (laughs) Uh, Three out of the last four. They've won back-to-back games in Norman for the second time. Uh, in like the recent memory, yeah, I yeah. I hate this a lot. I'm very upset, and I talked to Mark last night about this. I'm upset because I don't know who to be upset at. I know I'm not upset at Brent Venables, but should I be upset with the offense, with the defense, with certain people? Uh, should I be upset that Danny Stutzman got effing road dogged on the on a third and sixteen play? and he's supposed to be the leader of the defense? Should I be upset that Dylan Gabriel can't hit Drake Stoops on a fourth and five on a five-yard out route? Should I be upset with the offensive line for multiple false start penalties that killed drives? I I legitimately, I don't know. I just don't All know. of them. All of them. Yeah. And of so it. I think when you just look at, hey, let's put it in one sentence, right? We got outcoached. That no one likes to hear that. It's yeah. not fun. We're all on board the Brent Venables bandwagon, but Chris Kleiman got his guys ready. Mm-hmm. Adrian Martinez went from a bench candidate to four touchdowns on the ground and one in the air. And we were talking like we had the best defense in the country coming into this game. So I think we all kind of drank the Kool-Aid a little bit. I know I did. Mm-hmm. I, I'm getting in fight with commenters in the in the videos you know so (laughs) like you know i was but big eye opener you know lots of lots of as he said after week one you got to go back and strip it down to its parts and there's a lot to strip down here yep yeah i think so i think for me mark's mark's totally right i i drank the kool-aid too i think we all did i think basically all of us um sooner fans did and i think coming out of last night I have to remind myself that this is a new staff and a new team, and it is going to take time for us to see the changes, right? And we played so well those first three games, and then we came into this game and we looked like a completely different team. We either weren't ready, or I, that's it. We weren't ready. We weren't prepared. And at the end of the day, that's coaching. And I am fascinated on how BV responds to this and what this team is able to do um, furthering into the season. Pat, Matt, what'd you see? Yeah, I thought, you know, our Kansas State being our Achilles heel was going to leave to California with Lincoln Riley. Um, I really thought that we were going to go ahead and uh, and uh, stop them from beating us. But uh, under the lights, Norman, 5 p.m., loud crowd. I was not expecting this at all. 7 p.m. I don't 7 p.m. Know. Sorry, you're all right. Right. You're right. Right. <laughs> Coast yeah, thing. That's, yeah. that's on West Coast time. It's yeah. okay. It's all right. Matt would see crazy like, 5 p.m. games. Yeah. Basically, wow. when you gave that that recap there and then you said Kansas State won 41 to 34, I literally got chills. I was like, I can't believe that actually happened last night. So we talked so much about what is the only thing OU had to do and stop last night. That was Deuce Vaughn. And that was a QB run. And we didn't do anything. We didn't stop them at all. They gashed us on all levels people were running down the seams wide open adrian martinez had all day i know tyson's probably gonna handle this later zero pressure zero sacks last night that it that just can't happen yeah did we have a couple tackles for loss on pretty obvious run situations for the kansas state we couldn't stop them on any levels on the defensive end and just offensively i mean we had over 450 yards of offense but self-inducing penalties is what killed four, actually five drives in a row. You just can't have that. We got out coached. That's what Kansas State does best is they don't have those self-inflicting penalties and they play straight up. Matt, I hate to break it to you, and that's a good good segue, but my my brother in program, 
Oh, you had over 550 yards of offense oh, last night. Sorry. Uh, no. Miss 100 I'm, yards I'm, there. We did I think have that was over a lot of garbage time you, d- well, you were so. correct. You were correct in saying we were over 450, but I was like going further yeah. on your point. Sorry. Good point. That, Good they, point. <laughs> that they had even more yardage and they still lost. So, though you offense, 550 total yards. We'll start with the offense, guys. 550 total yards of offense. We'll look at uh, some stats. Dylan Gabriel, 26 for 39, 330 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Eric Gray, the leading rusher, 16 carries for a buck 14, no touchdown there. Dylan Gabriel, seven for uh, seven rushes for 61 yards as well. Marvin Mims, leading receiver, four for 87 and a tutter. Theo Weiss, three for 75 and a tutter. I thought the receivers were the best unit on the field last night. I thought they looked great. Um, I have a massive problem with Dylan Gabriel. And my problem is he doesn't hit the easy throws. He makes the hard throws look easy. And I've never seen anything like it. And it baffles me. If the guys are running downfield, he can drop it in a bucket. If they're running five yard out routes, he, he can't, he can't hit it. I've never seen anything like it. He's got to be more accurate. It's plain and simple. And he'll be the first to tell you. And I'll give Dylan Gabriel credit in his availability last night. He was like, I got to be better. And it starts with me. I'm the one who touched the ball every play. That's what you want to see out of your leaders. And look, was he perfect? Absolutely not. Was he the reason that we like lost the game? I don't think so. But he was part of it for sure. His inaccuracy was part of it. We got it's got to be better. Um. And I thought that, I thought Eric Gray two weeks in a row. I mean, we we give a lot of credit to Marcus Major on this podcast, yep. especially me and Mark. Yep. Eric Gray was Eric Gray was that dude again last. He's night. the best back. Yep. He, proved he was it last very night. explosive. He was he was he was that dude again, and he deserves a lot of credit. I made a prediction at the beginning of the year that this offensive line was going to be one of the best in the country. I'm dead wrong. They're freaking lost. They're undisciplined. They don't know what they're doing at times. I just I just don't understand. Um, so I, th- those are my issues with what, with what we saw last night, but I want to give credit where it's due. I thought the receivers were once again, the best part of the offense and Eric gray looked, looked great. Ryan or no, we'll start with Matt. Matt, what'd you see, dude? Yeah, I think for me, uh, it just goes back to the penalties. I think a lot of it was just bad timing, right. For the, the offense we've, I think it was the second half. We started four drives in a row. Eric Gray absolutely gashing the Kansas State offense. Obviously, we're going that up tempo, and all of a sudden, false start, first and fifteen, or a holding penalty, first and twenty. Just absolutely killed the first four drives, and we were gashing and we were making plays. And then again, I think it's just, I mean, 26 of 39, that's 66% passing. That's that's a great stat line. But I think what it comes down to again is the, the third down efficiency, four of 13. It's those third down throws, like the one that you said, the Drake Stoops, fourth and fifth. He's completely open. He's got to hit him in the numbers there. Yeah. Really bad execution just on those plays and just the discipline of the penalties. Just, I, mean, I was just furiated because I was like, man, we we're playing so good yeah. at this point. Just bad execution on those third down, those penalties that were just unwarranted. <laughs> Uh, before we get Pat, I want you. I want you to jump in here, but I want to say this real quick. Third down efficiency. OU four for thirteen on third downs, one for two on fourth down. I wanted to pull my hair out on every time that we are there on third down. It was driving me nuts, Pat. Yeah, we need to be the first team getting us momentum in the game, and we're not doing that. And that's been a consistent issue. And I thought that tonight or last night would have been the night that we started. We were going to be that first team getting us the momentum out of the gate, and we were not. Right. And they punch us in the face right away again. And we have to adapt to that. That's the that's the toughest thing to see from our offense is not getting it right from the beginning of the game. Thought Eric Gray had a great game. Wide receivers had a great game. DG's got a lot to work on. Um, yeah, it's pretty much it for me. Ryan. Yeah, I mean, you guys have, have covered most everything. I, I got to a point last night being in the stadium. And Mark knows I am negative Nancy usually during these uh, these games. But I just had this okay. feeling that every time that we had a third down, we just weren't going to get it. Like I oh, had no, no I had I, I had agree. absolutely yeah. no confidence no. in this offense. Mm-hmm. And I think that part of it has to do with Gabriel because, you know, three, four, five wide open. My dog just came in. <laughs> to say hello, everybody on I YouTube. Saw her. Um, 
like three, four, five, just completely missed open throws. Just like, just, just way, way over the head. And, but I don't, I don't necessarily think that he was, he's the problem in all of this, right? He needs to be better. Yes. But we are very used to as Oklahoma fans having insane, talented quarterbacks that win Heisman trophies. And we have to realize that we can't have that every year. Right. And he played decently. You know, he made some throws. He made some beautiful big throws that just perfect spots. But like, we're going to talk about defense. Our defense has to be better. Like Mm -hmm. we, we have to play that later. I know, I know, but I'm just like, I know this isn't, I don't think this game is on the offense. I think they need to play better and I don't think they played great. But I don't think they're the reason we lost this game. Yeah, Mark, it's tough to score. It's tough to score thirty-four points and feel like the offense was the problem. I am a little harsher on Dylan, I think, than you are, Ryan. I think the height is really affecting him. Yeah, he, because he is able to launch these deep balls, and for that, it's just about getting a good arc on the ball and trying to drop it in the bread basket. I don't think he's seeing over people mm-hmm. to to get some of these easy tosses, and even when he does, like. The toss is just off. Mark, I, that's uh, the thing that's weird. Brock, Brock Heward said on the broadcast last night <laughs> that Dylan Dylan throws great when there's no one in his face. But as soon mm-hmm. as people get in his face, I think that vision gets impaired and he can't he can't throw it as well. And that's a big part of it. And that, you that so you're right. I was just on the Brock broadcast Heward you couldn't hear guy. it. So yeah, exactly. Go ahead. Yeah. Mark. Sorry. No. So that's all. Uh, I I just think that like there are some reasons why he has trouble passing some of those passes and they're physical and things that we cannot fix aside from rolling him out and offensive line. I don't know how much I want to roll him out. One thing I want to touch on in the first two drives for each team in the game, Kansas state had the ball for eight minutes and 14 seconds and scored two touchdowns on 19 plays. OU had the ball for eight plays, two minutes and 15 seconds. We go down 14, nothing. You're in a hole. Suddenly all of the running game is available to K-State. That's part of the plan with the pace of the offense. I know it. I've preached it from day one, but if you're not getting any stops on defense, something has to give, you got to give those guys a chance. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that. I question for you guys. When we took the field goal in the third quarter, I wanted to go for that. Because I thought that that could be a huge momentum changer. I understand getting the points there, but, and, you know, the, the prediction books tell you to get the points there, but throw the prediction books out of the, out of the door, like in the trash when you're playing K State. Let's go for the fourth and short if we can, if we can. Didn't we, didn't we get a penalty on that play that made it? I'm looking at the scoring log because I agreed with you in the stands at fourth and three. I think we ought to go for that. But at fourth and eight, there's no way you got to take the points there. Yeah. At, At that point, you were looking just to build any sort of momentum and to get points. And Mark's Mark's right. They it was a penalty. It, yeah. They were lined up to go for it, and it was like Anton Harrison or McKay Tower, whoever. McKay Tower had two false starts. He's dead to me. Get the guy off the field. <laughs> I'm he. I hate him. And Anton Harrison had a had an issue with. Anton Harrison had a false start on a freaking field goal attempt. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, I don't, and and that's, a, that's our best coach is beating ball, and yeah. those guys mentally are just not there. Mm-hmm. And I, I, that's just a preparation thing. That's feeling like you're ready to play football. Yeah, no a snap count. Before before we get to the defense, be sure to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel, guys. We're about to hit 900 subs, trying to hit 1,000 by the end of the year. If you're watching this video on YouTube right now, there's a high chance that you are not subscribed to the channel. Help us out. It, help, it helps us create more content. Keep it coming for you guys. Go really, subscribe. really appreciate it. Follow us on Twitter at Program Guys with a Z, Instagram Program Guys with a Z, our Facebook page, Program Guys Podcast, and Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get them. That's where you can find us. So, guys, let's go ahead and talk about the defense now. Real fast. Eric yeah. Gray looks really, really, really good. Right. Eric Gray, I mean, mm-hmm. that's I'm, – I'm driving the Marcus Major bandwagon, and Eric Gray looked awesome to each other. Mark, will you admit that Eric Gray is the best back on OU? Uh, as of now, he's looked like it. Mm-hmm. No, he's looked like his major has 30 Sorry. pounds on him. Mark. And that's something I can't Mark. not look at. That doesn't matter. Yeah. Eric Ray is clearly the best back. He was very close. I will, I will say he, 
I will say, I think there was a couple, not even a couple, I, one run that comes to mind. I think Air Gray had a 25 yard run. That's a touchdown if Marcus Majors running that ball because I just feel like Air Gray doesn't have that breakaway speed. And I feel like Marcus does. Yeah, but I don't think so, Marcus got that shiftiness. I don't know. I think it goes both ways. I know. I think Eric Gray clearly, clearly proved last night. He's well, the guy. And fine. Marcus has not looked as good in his opportunities the last two weeks. That's yeah. just the yeah. truth, too. Yeah. Um, he scored two touchdowns last week, and I thought it was a weak game. And then we got our asses kicked last night. So Also, I want to give credit to Julio Farouk. I thought Julio played a very good game as well. Um, he looked mm-hmm. he looked good, got more involved. He had five catches, 69 yards. Nice. That's an uh, active thing, too. We gave him two carries as well. Yeah. There were some design plays to go to him. I like seeing sure. it, but also I hate losing. I know. Marvin yeah. can just get 10 catches if it means we win. Man. Dude, yeah. I agree. I agree. All right, let's move, on. let's move on to the defense. Defense, there's a lot of issues. I mean, plain and simple. I, the, I think the place I want to start is the third downs, and you can't get them off the field. And this comes a week after. I've said this to myself a million times. They allowed, they they scored ten points to Tulane last week. They they scored ten points against Tulane at home. But also, their fourth and third down conversions last week were like nothing. They converted like one or two of of each, and they had like eighteen attempts. They were like two for eighteen on third down or or something crazy like that. And they come out here and they com- convert fifty percent of their third downs and a hundred percent of their fourth downs against OU. And on the last play, third and sixteen. You're trying to stop Adrian Martinez. You know what they're going to do. They're trying to run the clock. Ted Roof told you in his post-game press conference that he knew that it was going to be quarterback draw or run something safe. So they had a spy there. They had a spy. They rushed five, and they were going to leave someone as a spy. And I don't want them throwing players under the bus, obviously, but whoever that spy is, did not do their job and was not to Ryan's or to Mark's point. They weren't coached well enough to be in that spot. They weren't. And that's what cost you the game. It was brutal. It was brutal to me. The third down conversions are the biggest thing that sticks out to me because like Ryan said, when the offense was on the field, I didn't feel like they were going to convert a third down. And I felt like we weren't going to get them off the field on third down, no matter how long it was Mm -mm. the entire night. Somebody else go. I, I can't, I'm mad. I, so this defensive performance was just atrocious. And I think that's what Venable said in his press conference. He's like, we played awful. I don't remember the word that he used, but he used, he used a word. Horrendous, and I believe. Horrendous, horrendous. And like, it's very hard for me to understand how it was this bad, considering how this defense had played the last three weeks. Mm-hmm. And I think ultimately it comes down to coaching, like we've said, They were not prepared. They were not ready for this. Even as much as they said they were going to be ready, they were not ready. They got punched in the face in those first two um, drives, and they just were not able to to rebound. And and that falls on coaching. The one thing that I don't understand is some of our best players that we've been talking about for uh, since we started this season were just no-shows last night. Like, Stutzman was nowhere. Like... Billy Bowman was just like nowhere to be found. Like he, you, like they had, where, they had tackles, but yeah. they weren't making big plays. I'll tell you, and the thing that I was, he was getting road dogged on third and sixteen. But and there's people who ask for a hold on that play. No way, he got freaking bullied by that yeah. offensive line. Sorry, go ahead. Like, where the hell is Jaron Cannon? He didn't play at all last night. Yeah, that was I the biggest surprise I, for me. I don't understand why. Like, what are we doing? Are we trying to hold his red shirt? Because that's stupid. No, he played on special teams. We couldn't no, even hold right. his red shirt. So I like, don't know what, why what you don't. What the hell are we doing? Your with Uber who, athlete on the field to stop that. Yeah. With like how many times we have been switching around our, our defensive backs and our, our D line, like, and we decide not to do it in this situation where our defense is just right. getting trampled on. Like, the coaching here, I don't understand. I don't understand what we're doing. It feels stubborn. I don't know if that's right. I don't know coaching that well, but it feels kind of stubborn. And when we were down 14, nothing early, I'm sorry, guys, the dogs are going crazy out there. Uh, Uh, When we're down 14, nothing early, there was no adjustment made. They just kept doing the same stuff and it kept working on us. That's disheartening. 
because it's, it's com- not what we've come to expect. Right. It's completely different from what we saw last week. That's what I don't understand. Like, I know Kansas State is probably a better team than Nebraska, right? But we, you can see those real-time adjustments that we made for that. Yeah. And after we got punched in the mouth that game, too, you know, with that first drive. Like, I just – I don't understand where this team that we have seen for three weeks went during this time. They, they disappeared. Hey, credit to K-State. I mean, they yes. ran the ball 49 times, and we never – ever found a consistent way to stop them right adrian martinez has looked as good as the five of us playing quarterback for three weeks and we turned him into vince young so credit to them they came out ready they they really showed up to a game that i thought we were going to have well in hand yeah no i mean Ah. huge huge credit to k-state i mean they showed up they show up every time we knew they were going to show up they had just come off a loss. They were going to be angry, and our team wasn't ready for it. And Pat, and that's really, really disappointing. Pat, get in there. I thought the tackling sometimes was there. Like, I know we're talking about sometimes blaming the coaches, but the tackles were there. We weren't. We just weren't making them. Like, Stutzman just wasn't making them. And I wanted to see us adapt to that and putting, put in JK7, Jared Kanak7, and have him make those tackles because no one was tackling a 5'6 running back. He was almost too small to tackle. Like you, you could see it. He was hiding. He was hiding. And then all of a sudden he had a quick burst and we couldn't, we couldn't find him. We couldn't tackle him. It was outrageous. And we should have switched up some players and we should have gotten that right as soon as possible. And, and we just didn't, we kept going with our guys who were playing the whole game and they weren't doing a good enough job. It was sad to see. Um, yeah. It was just disappointing all around. Matt. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I, the, the biggest thing that we talked about in the preview pod was we have to stop the run. Adrian Martinez was averaging a hundred yards passing. We clearly knew we had to make him throw the football and we did the exact opposite. We made him look like a Heisman contender. And let's, let's be fair. This was the Adrian Martinez who was playing for Nebraska, who also played in Norman last year. And this was his revenge game. Everyone was dogging on him at Nebraska. He gets to transfer to a new place. He gets to play the Sooners again. And I mean, they almost beat us last year if it wasn't for the DJ Graham, you know, wild interception, right? So he came in there and showed, you know, what he's capable of doing. And he had, you know, 100 and, or two, 234 passing and 148 on the ground. So, and four touchdowns, like we mentioned earlier. So a lot of missed tackles, couldn't stop the run all night, wasn't consistent enough. Uh, just really hard to see, especially from the performance that we had against Nebraska. We just looked like we were playing on our heels the entire game, too. Like we weren't pressing the attack, being aggressive mm-hmm. like we were, causing those tackle for losses, causing those sack or the, the the QB pressures. And we just let Adrian Martinez literally do anything he wanted to do last night. Uh, he was just calm, cool, collected, taking the yards where he he, he could. It's, it's a really sad performance, and it's going to be interesting to see how we rebound from here. That's a great point, Matt. Before this game, it felt like our defense was dictating games. Mm -hmm. Like, we were not letting the offense take what they could get. We were setting the line of scrimmage. We were destroying receivers. We were crushing quarterbacks. This game, they came out and clearly had a more prepared and steady game plan than we did. We didn't adjust. And then I I think you said it great. We played on our heels the rest of the night. We didn't go attack. We didn't start sending pressure at Adrian Martinez. I don't know why. Grant Venables is known for exotic blitz schemes, and we sent three or four and watched Adrian Martinez run all over us to the tune of 10 more minutes time of possession. I was just looking at that, and I can't get over it. Tough stuff, because that's not the defense that we saw the first three weeks. And look, if you're... Go ahead. Go ahead, Mason. I was just going to say real quick, time of possession, I think, is just going to be absolutely critical. I mean, you mentioned the first quarter when we had it for two minutes. I mean, that's going to cause our defense to be tired. I know BV said, hey, the best way to get off the field to get some Gatorade is to get off. But when you're on the field and you're playing that many plays, I mean, that's going to be tough for any defense. They've got it. I'm sure they were absolutely gassed by by the end of the third quarter going into them. I'm sure they were. And that's where our offense has to help. Yeah, that's where our offense has to help out. It was eight minutes in the first two drives. Yeah. They got to be like gassed. I mean, just rocked. Yeah. The yeah. the and one we saw that. The one thing I want to I want to mention is they ran the ball. Kansas State ran the ball extremely well. And if I'm looking for someone to 
quote unquote blame. I think we've given a lot of praise to this, to these linebacker groups. And I think they deserve a bulk of the blame. They weren't mm-hmm. there. They're the second level. They're, they're the line of defense against the run game. Those defensive linemen eat up blocks. That's their job. They eat up blockers to let the linebackers make plays. And they just didn't David Aguebu, Danny Stutzman, those guys who were, who we've praised for the first three weeks and deservedly. So they like, I was looking at the stats uh, and I'm looking at tackles right now. David Aguebu, that's the quietest 15 total tackles I've ever, I've ever seen. I feel like I I was, I feel like I was looking for him all night and I'm rewatching the last play, you know, and it may have been designed that way, but David's on the, on the backside trying to blitz and Martinez just runs right by him. And while he's running downfield, it looks like David Aguay was running half speed. And it just drives me nuts. It just drives me crazy. Um, Now, if you're watching this right now and you're thinking, wow, the program guys want to kill Brent Venables and kill this program. That's not true. I Mm -mm. we're just emotional. 100 (laughs) percent believe in this team. I think this is still a conference championship caliber team. I my sure, but we were talking playoff. We were a week ago. Uh, like, you saw that six, six look, days ago. <laughs> the, hey, and it needs to be said: OU's lost to Kansas State before we made the college football playoff. Yeah, so let's let's before. just pump the brakes for a second. Is this ideal? A hundred percent. No, I would prefer if you're going to lose games, you lose games to teams that you should lose to, like maybe a, a, a Texas, a Baylor, and Oklahoma State. Off the top of my head, you win the games you're supposed to against lackluster competition and you made Kansas state look like world beaters last night. And sadly, they're probably going to finish sixth or fifth in the conference and you lost them and you shouldn't have. That's my problem. Do I believe in this team? Still 100%. They've shown us what they're capable of. This offense can still score with the best of them and they can, they can keep you in games. The defense has got to figure it out. They got hit in the mouth and OU football just tweeted something this morning that said, so what now what mentality. Basically saying, you you better respond. It's time mm-hmm. to respond. And I think it was Ryan who made the point earlier. We're going to see what this team's made out of. Are they 100% bought in to what Brent Venables is selling? Or at the first sign of trouble, are they going to revert back to, to what they've always been? And that's, and that's a team that can't get the job done. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, think- I'm going to be curious. Um, yeah, B- BV said that specifically, and he said, you know, we are not going to be known, like, for this loss. Like, this loss will not define us. What yeah. will define us is how we respond to it. And I love that mentality. I I mean, again, last week we were so high. We were like, playoff team, playoff team, right? Um, this happened. I'm, I'm going to try to take a silver lining here. This happened early. It's the fourth game of the season. It's the first Big 12 game. Yes, we're upset about this. Yes, it's not great. Yes, we look terrible, but it's early. We have eight, nine more games to go. Got a lot of potential and opportunity for this team to, to, to still show us what they are capable of. And so I'm trying to think about this optimistically as much as I can. Um, but I'm, I'm Which still is shocking excited. For you. It's very <laughs> shocking. Very shocking, <laughs> very uh, shocking for me. Pat, Optimistically gotta... speaking, I do want to say that the pass coverage was pretty good last night. It was. They had a lot of good deep balls that were stopped and blocked by our guys. I, I think I think the secondary did play well. I agree yeah. with you. I, I think if there was one bright spot on the defense, it was them. Yeah. But that's that's just that. Uh I do want to go on record as saying I said in the pod last week with Mark and Matt that as this team is currently formed, that I think they could be a playoff team and they are a playoff team. I I stick to it. I think that they are. I think you had a bad game and you and you showed bad things on tape, but I don't think that's who you are. I think you're the most skilled team in the conference. And if you win the conference, you have every shot at winning or earning a spot in the college football playoff. That's just I'm not backing off it. So that's where I'm at. It's funny. You we I I brought that up earlier and then just started thinking about it. And oh my God, my dogs. <laughs> that one's Margo. You're nice. She's losing her mind. I think the issue with this team is ceiling. I think 11 penalties, you can clean that up, right? You can get that a little bit better. You can't put three more inches on Dylan Gabriel and 
do away with some of the mistakes that he's making that, I mean, they're easy ones. It's like you said earlier, he's making the easy throws hard. And I don't know if that's something you can fix. That's a mindset. That's a guy looking at a field and seeing something you're not seeing. Yeah. Matt. Yeah, it's going to be how we respond. We're going to TCU upcoming. It's an 11 o'clock game. It gets weird in Fort Worth. So it does. this is what we want to see. We lost at home to Kansas State again. I just want to go on record. There's two things I'm never doing before we play t- Kansas State again at home, which will be actually maybe never at this point, but never getting a haircut again. And Mark can never go to the home game because last time me and Mark went, Kansas State also beat us at home. So, Mark, no more home games against Kansas State. <laughs> Just putting it out there. We should just not schedule K-State anymore. Ever ever again. For real. But there is a lot of positivity. The offense still put up godly numbers. I would take that offense over every day. Like Mark said, there's a lot of things to clean up. The penalties, you know, maybe better play calling. There's too too many swing passes. Listen, we go the well way too much. I thought the swing passes were out of the offense. I think we got to give DG enough time to throw down the field because we can see we had completions of 50 or three 50 yard gains to Marvin Mims and those guys still a lot of positivity, still believe in this team. They just got a lot of things to clean up on both sides. God, they did throw a lot of swing passes. Mark. I not way too just much. now realizing yeah. that hey, it worked the, the first couple so times, but yeah. then we just kept going back to it. It's like, Hey, it let's, throw it down. let's throw Eric it down. Eric Gray had more catches than anyone. Yeah. Dude, that what drove me of, nuts. What it's kind like, of Josh Heupel 2013 yeah, nonsense dude. is this? Yeah. I, throw I the know. ball deep. You have, you have Marvin Mims. He's the best player on the field. Throw him the – he should have more catches than Eric Gray. He should. That's crazy. It just – this is where we're at, guys. You all right? Sooners are 3-1, and one, okay? And it's how you respond. And we're going to respond with an episode this week. We're going to preview the TCU Horn Frogs. We're going we're gonna to get you ready for what is, hopefully, an OU win in Fort Worth. And uh, as always, we appreciate you guys listening and watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on all of our social medias, Program Guys with a Z is where you can find us. And uh, be sure to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get podcasts. That's where you can find us. It's uh, it's going to be okay, guys. We're going to be okay. And I want everybody who's watching to have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy the week and get your mind right because we're back at it. We'll have an episode for you on Wednesday or Thursday. Not really sure yet. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure Get it out. Get ready for the Chandler Morris revenge game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. I forgot yeah. he was there. Jeez, I forgot he the, was there. The Tyler yeah. Guyton revenge game. Amazing. Amazing. All right, boys. That's going to do it for this post-game pod. Sooners lose 41-34. to 34. Pat, take us out. Keep pushing it, baby.